In this video, we're gonna be talking about a massive storm developing, bringing a fire hose of precipitation and a major snowstorm over the next seven days. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Good morning, everyone. I am back. I took a couple of days off with the family on a vacation, a road trip down to uh, Big Ben National Park here in uh, Texas. And man, we just had a lot of a lot of good times together. <laughs> the weather was beautiful. A lot of hiking, a lot of driving. But man, it was nice to get out and enjoy nature and have uh, enjoy the stars out there. And but man, we drove almost 2,000 miles and we'd never even left Texas. So that gives you an idea how big Texas truly is. So we got a lot to talk about with this developing storm system. We've got the, uh, a trough digging in into uh, in the higher elevations. That's actually bringing some snow up into uh, Utah as well as uh, Colorado here. But we have another developing system and we have a yet another developing system that's gonna bring a massive deluge of precipitation. We've got that ridge locked over Southeast uh, Canada here. And we do have some cooler conditions <laughs> finally filtering in into the northeast with some below average uh, temperatures out there. But as we kind of take a look at over the, the overall hazard index for today, uh, you can definitely see this is uh, Tuesday, October 19th. We've got that storm system that's dumping heavy snow. In fact, they've got winter storm warnings over portions of uh, Wyoming here and also winter weather advisories in portions of uh, Colorado as well as Utah with that heavier snow that fell uh, yesterday and also winding down uh, today. But there's gonna be a lot more uh, to come with that developing system off the West Coast. But let's take a look uh, over the last uh, couple days. We did, in fact, have that La Nina uh, be classified from NOAA. In fact, uh, they have an 87% chance now that it's gonna continue all the way into the winter months going into the early part of spring so this is something we've been talking about on this channel and, and it did in fact uh come to fruition and a lot of it has to deal with the below average uh below average sea surface temperatures out here in the uh, equatorial pacific so what does a typical la nina kind of look like you you dip basically have two jet streams you've got the subtropical jet that plays off the southern regions and then you have also have the polar jet that's well to the north so typically in a La Nina, uh, you've got a little bit cooler conditions out here into the Equatorial Pacific. That tends to bring overall drier conditions for the southern regions, southern California into the southwest over Texas, have overall less precipitation for them. But then you have the northern branch is a lot more active with the polar jet, bringing the, the above average rains back into the Pacific Northwest into northern parts of California. And this is, in fact, what we're seeing play out this week. Here's the overall sea surface temperatures uh, out here into the Atlantic as well as the, the world here. Man, we've got all those below average uh, sea surface anomalies. This is the one that plays off the southern jet and that's bringing all the cooler conditions out here. And you tend to have this southern subtropical jet a lot less active when you have cooler conditions out here. And then the, the polar jet would be a lot more active because the man, look at all this warm blob out here. So as this becomes more active, it's able to pick up a lot of this uh, warm, uh, trop, you know, warm sea surface temperatures up here in the northern branch and dump it into the interior regions and where it's gonna be cold enough, it's gonna all that, a lot of that's gonna be forming in the form of snow as we get deeper into fall and into the winter months. So yeah, you can definitely see there's these above average sea surface anomalies like kind of hugging the coast. And that's actually what's gonna keep uh, the Pacific alive, I even have another developing storm potentially as the week goes on. But man, we still got all those well above average sea surface anomalies out here in the Caribbean and the Gulf, as well as off the Eastern seaboard. So what well, I'm still watching uh, any type of tropical development out here with like lagging fronts this time of year, because we still are in tropical season and it goes into the end of November. So as we take a look going into that Thursday time frame, this is when we have that massive storm system developing off the West Coast here off the 
off the Gulf of Alaska. And this thing is gonna be really, truly impressive at this massive deepening low pressure bringing, picking up a lot of that warm blob that I showed you. They're gonna be dumping it into the West Coast of regions. And a lot of it's gonna bring some much needed rain for that area. And then where it's gonna be cold enough, it's all gonna be forming in the fall of uh, snow into the, uh, as we get deeper into the interior regions. But let's take a look at the pressure drops because this is really impressive. Here's the look by Wednesday morning. That's just tomorrow morning, uh, October the 20th. You can look at the time here, 6Z, that's right around that midnight time frame. And here's that first low pressure system down to a 978, bringing some instability off the West Coast. But this is the one that I'm going to be uh, zooming in on. This is down to a 998 low pressure. Now, typically that would be about a minimal tropical storm. So check this out, what happens with just within 24 hours. This rapidly deepens down 46 millibars just within that 24 hour time span by Thursday morning. And this would be classified as what they call a bomb cyclo or what they were going through, what they call bomb, bombogenesis, or the official term is cyclogenesis. So all this basically means is you, it's, it's, it's the same classification as a rapid intensity uh, hurricane. So this is almost the equivalent of a major hurricane down to a 952 millibar low pressure. This is a deepening low out here off the west coast and that is going to bring some very high winds off the west coast regions in fact some extreme uh, uh waves as well as we get into that thursday friday morning time frame man we've got that system getting a little bit closer off to off to the west coast that's going to bring some massive waves upwards to 40 to 50 feet offshore but look at the wind direction pushing all that coastal impacts along the coast so yeah if you live along the coast you're definitely going to see some well above average uh, waves uh swells out here off, off the coastal regions with that wind direction just pounding the coast and yet we have another system so there's actually three of them the one that's happening currently right now and then that system that main system that's coming in uh thursday and friday and then we have a reinforcing shot that comes in into the weekend into early next week so we've got three systems coming in back to back to back off the west coast bringing a lot of precipitation and then heavy snow as it gets into the some of the interior regions but you can look at the precipitation uh water uh anomalies here Look at that fire hose of precipitation developing off the west coast. That's just going to bring a stream of moisture in and some much needed rain off the Pacific Northwest. This is what they call the atmospheric river uh, coming black back into play. You have been extremely dry in this regions over the last technically six months. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. But man, some much needed rains coming in to northern California, especially where they desperately need it. In fact, this is the overall uh, precipitation anomalies over the last six months. And you can see since April, since we've been in that Enzo neutral, it's been very wet along the Southern branch, but now the flip is on. The flip is on. We've been really dry off here on the West Coast and off uh, into the Pacific Northwest. In fact, Sacramento just ended a 212 day dry streak where they didn't even have a drop. They didn't have any measurable precipitation all the way back since March the 19th. And that streak finally ended on October 17th with at least one one hundredth of an inch. So we're getting there. But man, there's a lot more on the table and some much needed rain uh, for that region. So as we move forward into that Friday time frame, this is that main system coming off the coast bringing a deluge of precipitation off the West Coast here into Washington and Oregon into Northern California. It's pretty calm into the interior regions. We do have that these, these uh, fronts that come all the way down to the coast. So we definitely have to watch these tailing fronts this time of year. If there's any type of low you know, vorticity trying to develop into those warmer temperatures, like I showed you into the, into the Caribbean, into the Gulf. So it's still tropical season. So we're always watching these fronts 
that lag behind to get out into the open waters uh, this time of year. So as we transition into that Saturday time frame for your weekend, again, we have a deluge of precipitation just off the west coast here and with that reinforcing shot that's going to come in for later into the weekend we've got a lot of that precipitation is going to be filtering down in the central and even parts of the southern california as well so that is going to bring some much needed rain it's going to spread into the interior regions but kind of lose its luster as we go through time but it's still going to bring some heavier precipitation uh, through the midsection of the country getting into parts of uh parts of kansas parts of missouri parts of oklahoma and even to uh arkansas as well so as we get into that sunday time frame Again, just relentless amount of precipitation to coming in off the West Coast. It's finally gonna get enough oomph to spread into these interior regions. We're dealing with the snow now, by the time it reloads back into time we get into that Sunday time frame, a lot of this is gonna transition into the form of snow, into the higher elevations, into uh, Idaho as getting into Wyoming again. But look at that much needed precipitation trying to dig a little bit further south as we get into Central California and then eventually parts of Southern California where they just desperately need any rainfall they can get. Because, yes, by the time we get into that Monday time frame, yes, we're talking six days from now. But, it, yeah, that much needed precipitation with that third wave coming in that's going to bring all the precipitation a little bit further down into uh, California by then, getting into Idaho, ne Nevada here, as well as uh, uh, Utah, giving them much needed precipitation. But then we go into that Tuesday time frame, time frame next Tuesday. There's all the heavier snow that's going to be breaking out by then into Idaho, into Montana, as well as Wyoming. They had that big snow event last last week. They've got another one on the table. This will be a week from now, but they're getting some snow now. But then a bigger snowstorm comes in about a week from now with that third leg coming in. There's that storm that's going to be developing off the Pacific uh, into the Pacific, taking advantage of some of those warmer sea surface anomalies that I showed you just kind of along the coast here. Even though we got well below average temperatures further down to the south, it's still these storms that kind of hug the coast that can keep the Pacific alive, even in, even into a La Nina type pattern that we're going into deeper into fall and especially going into uh, the winter months with an 87% chance of it, of it continuing. So as we transition into the winds, man, these things are going to be really packing a punch with those three-prong approach coming in over the course of the next week. So these are the winds with uh, coming in. This is the uh, graphic down here below. So really anything in the green, you can experience anywhere of those tropical form storm, storm uh, force winds. They're going to be coming in off those uh, Pacific a jet stream but man where the red and the and the and the oranges fall that's where the, some of those higher winds are going to be developing a lot of this is going to be blowing snow out here into the higher elevations but a, that deluge of precipitation and those those higher wind gusts that you're going to have to be dealing with over the course of the week with those three systems coming in back to back to back and that second one that th thursday friday time frame that's typically the that's the biggest one that's going to be really making an impact off the west coast and that third one that comes in late into the weekend into early next week is going to be moving to, oh, more into the interior regions and that's where all these heavier winds are going to fly into uh, utah getting into colorado by then along the front range because man those winds are going to be packing a punch anywhere from 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gust by the time we get into that monday tuesday time frame of next week but there's your temperature anomalies over the next seven days this is an average over the next seven days where a lot of the rain is going to fall along the coastal regions that's where you're going to be seeing those below average uh, temperature anomalies with a lot of the reds showing up and the oranges and the reds that's going to be overall two to four degrees above average on average now what is actually average this time of year this is the daily averages by the time we get into next Tuesday, October the 26th, depending on where you live in the part of the country. With those two to four degrees below average temperatures, you're typically right around 50 degrees into our northern interior, northern states, transforming into the 50s and the 60s 
uh, down here in the midsection of the country and then the 70s down south so we're not talking hot weather by any of the stretch of imagination but it's still above average and probably comfortable temperatures for fall but those 70s that you typically see this time of year in california uh, you're going to be even a little bit a little bit lower than that with all the rain coming in and then 60s that you typically see along the coastal regions you're you're going to be more or less in the 50s uh, for those high temperatures now let's take a look at the rain and this is very impressive off the west coast man bringing that fire hose of precipitation these you know these four to six upwards to eight to ten inch amounts can be fairly common over the next week into parts of California, into Washington and Oregon, a little bit lighter amounts as you spread uh, into the interior regions as it gets further inland, it's gonna be losing its luster. And then you can see much of the Southern branch is dry uh, with that cooler conditions out there in the equatorial Pacific. So you typically see that into a La Nina type pattern with these below average uh, you know, precipitation that's coming into play. And then we have that uh, northern branch a little bit more active as we get along the into the interior uh, upper regions of minnesota into w wisconsin get into michigan and upstate new york and then there's your snow over the next week so there's the heavier snow that's flying right now and then we have a reinforcing shot that comes in into early next week so over the next seven days yeah some of those idaho's some of those parts of wyoming getting into uh west of denver again into colorado into utah you're going to be seeing those major snows flying in that region so i appreciate you watching it's good to be back uh do hit the like button uh definitely uh, subscribe to my channel and catch the latest update where i protect you before and after storm